camera. Is that what I'm, okay, I just want to make sure I'm, I'm here, yeah. bro. Are you good now? Yeah. You sure? Yeah, let's get it, bro. All right. You ready, you ready for this? <laughs> Hello, audience. Welcome back to another Couch Potato General Manager video as we continue our 2020 NFL Draft recaps. And we're, we're moving to the NFC East here and the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys had what we all believe is a very impressive draft class. And I want to start right at the top. Uh, uh, they received a gift. A gift fell in their lap in C.D. Lamb, wide receiver out of Oklahoma. Drew, I'm going to start with you. What are your thoughts on Lamb? I'm going to start with Jerry Jones real quick. Um, we need him to uh, – well, I don't need him to. I'm not a Cowboy fan, but uh, Cowboy fan – Needs him to be um, drafting from the Titanic every year or aircraft mm. carrier, whatever that was. It looked like it was wonderful. <laughs> um, I thought Jerry might lay it down, but he did not. Uh, he did the right thing. Uh, fell into his lap. Couldn't do nothing else. Um, drafted the CD Lamb. Should have went with Haley first, seeing how that's his receiver one. Uh, this is my receiver two. Well, I just wanted um, to get you out of the way because that's my receiver yeah. one too. Just wanted oh, to get you out oh. of the way. <laughs> okay, but um, yeah, man, I, I, I just it, it's 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 a no brainer. Um, this is a guy who it, 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 he, he was the lead in, in many categories when you talk about the, the receiver position, route running, uh, ability to go up and get the football, uh, ability to play, uh, yak, which I think which for me it might be his best ability is, is to make plays after the catch, uh, turn a 10 uh, yard route into a, a, a 50 yard touchdown. Um, and, and a guy who, when you talk about the receiving core of the Cowboys, bro. Is is I'm gonna give him a I'm gonna give the this receiving core right now an A, man. not giving it an A plus, just an A, because there's there's some A pluses out there. They're not there yet. Well, in terms of three receivers, yeah. which which other team you saying got a better three receivers in the Cowboys? Right? Oh, you now? already know. You already know, bro. Come on, man. <laughs> FK Buccaneers, bro. What you mean? Yeah. Go ahead. That's, that's A plus. We got third receiver. What you talking, Justin? What's wrong with you? Uh, yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I just got Tyler. Y'all got Tyler. But um. Yeah. The Dallas Cowboys, man. I, I want to play with them in Madden, man. The, this the three receivers set with with Gallup, C.D. Lamb now, Amari Cooper. You got Dak uh, under center, man. Lamb was my number one receiver, like CPGM Juice. Um. I wish the Falcons would have drafted him at sixteen. I'm a Falcons fan, it's biased, but. The Cowboys got him at 17. I think he was a steal of the first round. Uh, this guy, CeeDee Lamb, his ability to get open with his route running, uh, his strong hands, his body control, contested catches, yak ability. Drew, you said it all, man. It's just – this is young Nuke Hopkins all over again, man. For my money, for my money, Nuke Hopkins is the best receiver in the NFL. He, he's not the best at everything. Obviously, there's certain receivers that excel more in certain aspects of the game. But when you talk about the full package – Give me DeAndre Hopkins. I think C.D. Lamb is is a carbon copy, but better than Hopkins coming out of college. Oh yeah, and and Dallas, I think they felt strongly as well. I mean, reportedly Lamb was the sixth player on their board. For him to drop down to seventeen, certainly there were other needs, but the value was just too immense. And and they did the right thing. They they didn't waste any time, and, and they selected the best receiver in the draft, as far as I'm concerned. You know, the the proliferation of the of the eleven personnel. You know, that, that's going to give defenses fits. It's going to give dif defenses fits. And, and now you go from, you know, Jason Witten and Randall Cobb to a much more athletic, younger group in, in with, obviously with Cooper and Gallup flanking uh, C.D. Lamb and then, of course, Blake Jarwin at tight end. I, I think it was a home run pick here. On day two, the, the Dallas Cowboys selected Trevon Diggs, cornerback out of Alabama, and, and he appears to be a very good schematic fit for a team that, that needs more ball production from their defensive backs. You know, with the loss of Byron Jones, and then of course, question marks long-term regarding Chidobe Awuzie and Jordan Lewis. You know, are those guys going to be fixtures as part of this defense moving forward? I think Diggs represents terrific value here in the second round. And, and, and like I said before, meets a need. Hadley, what do you think about Diggs when you watch him on film? He's like a, a wide receiver playing the cornerback position. Um, and just his ball skills. When when things are in front of him, he, he's excellent. Uh, he's he turns uh, defense into offense. Uh, he's long. He has a length. Um, I think you know you lose Byron Jones uh, in free agency. I think you bring in Diggs. I think he starts immediately for the, the Dallas Cowboys. He's, he's an excellent fit, man. I, these top two picks, I think, are 
excellent, excellent, excellent getting the wide receiver in the corner and Trayvon Diggs. Yeah, for Diggs, I have long, strong, and placed every bit of his size, aggressive, and a guy uh, that will stick his head in there in the run game. May have the best moment of truth corner or maybe the best moment of truth cornerback in the class. Helly, you spoke to that. He's extremely comfortable in coverage, whether he's in man or in zone, although obviously I think uh, zone may – I don't know, a lot of people want to go with zone as his his fit. Um, and and I, I would say um, man may – it's a challenge for him. It's a challenge for him because if, if he has this stab move that I love at the snap that he will do in, in press man coverage. Uh, when he doesn't do that, I think that's when you kind of you kind of get into trouble with him there. Uh, but it has has nice click and close for me. Um, my concern with him is that you know at times he will get caught uh, caught uh, flat footed um, a bit, um, and uh, you know I kind of question his long speed due to that. But uh, like uh, CPGM Juice had stated earlier, is a good fit for the Cowboys in the zone scheme that they're going to play. It's two home run uh, picks back to back as far as I'm concerned. And when you talk about fit and the style of player. The, the schematic fit is obvious here. You know, if, if Dallas deploys uh, that cover three look, I think Diggs fits right in. But I also think that he has the frame, the length, the requisite speed necessary to play man coverage. It, it's it, um, From that perspective, I think he needs to work on his technique. But I, I can't understate the value that he brings in terms of getting his hands on the football. This is something that this Dallas team has struggled with. They've struggled to, to eliminate – drives or or create field position for their offense because they they don't force turnovers the, the defensive backs aren't getting their hands on the football you know you mentioned that at times he gets caught flat-footed it's it's because he has that playmaker mentality and he's trying to to drive on the football so he, he has to do a better job of kind of determining when to take his his shots when to when to, to gamble a bit but but i think i think this is an excellent fit uh also on day two the Dallas Cowboys drafted Neville Gallimore out of Oklahoma. And, and Drew, I, I thought, I felt for a while that Dallas needed to add a, a an impact three technique. You know, when you have that even man front um, and you're one gapping, you, you got to have that interior pass rush. Nothing affects the quarterback better than the interior pass rush. I think I think a quality interior pass rush makes Demarcus Lawrence better, who, who struggled yeah. last year. Let's make no – no mistake about it. Lawrence has actually has enjoyed a terrific career, but 2019 was may have been his worst season as a pro. So, what, what do you think about Gallimore? Can he can he be what they thought Tristan Hill was? Are we are, are we giving up on Tristan Hill? What, what's the thought process here? I'm gonna take a shot. Uh, didn't 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 I almost said y'all, bro. I almost said it. Didn't the Cowboys? Didn't they sign um, Gerald McCoy? They did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just okay. All right. And, and Don Terry Poe. And Don Terry Poe. I mean, okay. yes, yes, but. But I, I don't think – while Gerald McCoy might still have decent football in him, he's not the player he once was, and he never lived up to what I think he was supposed to live up to. So, mm. so, so that being said, that being said I, 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 was a little, I was actually a little surprised that they drafted Gallimore because of the, the resources they put in during free agency. So, so, but I think Gallimore, Hill, one of those guys to me has to, has to separate themselves. I think it's going to be a one and done for Jerome McCoy. I'm not sure about Poe, but I have here first step quickness, hand uses at the point of attack is quick and violent, good lateral movement across the line of scrimmage with the uh, with the games they played up front with the Sooners, which is a lot of slanting and and just just hey, we need you three gaps over by the snap of the football, just just you know silly things, hands and feet match at the snap and through the through the play, uh, was double teamed uh, a ton and triple teamed at times for a guy his size, his excellent motor and movement has a swim and chop and spin that he will use to evade would-be blockers. Uh, there were a lot of instances where he would beat his guy, but had to deal with the next uh, guy, you know, whether it was to the left or the right arm or the back. Um, you know, I, I, I got here, man. I just, I hate, I hate, I really do hate watching the Big 12 and at times the Pac-12 when you talk about defensive linemen, specifically the Big 12. I'm, I'm always going to it, bro, because I'm always hoping that there'll be a change, bro, and there's not. And I, and I, I think they did this man a disservice. I think this is a, a, a uh, three technique all the way, period. And I think, um, you know, the, the Cowboys, I mean, uno, dos, tres, man, they, they hit it. Home run. And I, I think I, I, I would rather see at this point uh, uh, Neville Gallimore on the field more than Gerald McCoy. I've seen, I, I've seen enough uh, uh, Gerald McCoy. But this is also – I think they're kind of the, the same type of player. Um, and I think that Gerald McCoy can teach Gallimore some, um, some things – 
and make him a better player um, and even, you know, maybe pass that over to Tristan Hill. But I think this is, like you said, what they needed next to uh, Lawrence. You guys mentioned Gallimore as a three-tech. I actually think he could thrive as a one-tech. Uh, I think he could play three-tech also, but also a one-technique. Uh, you know, he's a penetrating defensive tackle. What I love the most about him is he will fight claw for everything, man. The intensity that he plays with. I've seen it time after time. It was first quarter. He's like, he's all right. Second quarter, third. He just keeps coming. You know what I'm saying? When guys are getting tired on the offensive line, this guy has the same intensity for all four quarters. So I do like that about him. Um, yeah, I do think he needs to get next to uh, – Gerald McCoy and those guys, the Marcus Lawrence and those guys, work on some of his pass rusher repertoire moves. But, yeah, man, it's another good pick for the Dallas Cowboys, man, definitely. On day three, Dallas continued their strong draft with, with senior bowl participant, not unlike Neville Gallimore, Reggie Robinson out of Tulsa, another cornerback, another size, speed type of player who really improved and blossomed during his senior campaign. Yeah, this was a, a late bloomer for me, man. Uh, I watched him kind of late in the process. It was – it was Amik Robertson and, and Reggie Robinson that really impressed me. Uh, Robinson was asked to man press with no safety help a lot. I seen him hold his phone and go one-on-one uh, -on -one with Taiwan Wallace, a guy that's going to be next year's draft class. He'll be a top pick. I have here, he has great ball skills. Uh, he can fall from short zone and make play on the football. He's a big corner with length. Love to get hands on receivers, push them to the boundary. Not afraid to come up and help in a run game. I think his technique is sound, mirror matchability. I think this is a steal right here, man. I like Reggie Robinson's game a lot. I got good size and place to it when coming up to stop the run like you, you had alluded to. Works through blocks. Um, he looks better in his zone to me. He's a handsy guy. He's down the field. Um, stays in his back. But, 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 but. He stays in his back but a, a little too long for me. Um, not getting his turning and running and going. Um, and this is a guy who also blocked uh, four kicks in college. So, um, you know, he has that, that contribution. We always talk about special teams, but this is a guy who, I mean, he might make, he, he's going, excuse me, he's going to make an immediate impact. Let me ask this question before we move on. You know, th there's, there's a number of cornerbacks already on this roster, you, despite the fact that Byron Jones has left. You, you, you have Chidobia Wuzia, you have Jordan Lewis, you have uh, Anthony Brown. You know, which, which of these guys gets displaced? Heather, you mentioned that you think Diggs is going to start immediately. Um, can, can Robinson compete for a starting position as early as 2020? Or are we, were we expecting I, him to come in a little bit later? No, nah, I, I think he can compete as, as quick as this season. I think wow. probably Anthony Brown might be the odd man out. Mm -hmm. um, I like Robinson and Diggs on the outside. I think Jordan Lewis could probably play the slot. Uh, Wuzier could play probably both. Um, so that's the, four, that's the four corners to me on the list. It's uh, Diggs, Robinson, Wuzier, and uh, Jordan Lewis. With their second fourth round pick, uh, another great selection here, another value selection here, I think, um, in Tyler Biotish, the center out of Wisconsin. Of course, Travis Frederick has retired. Joe Looney obviously played at a pretty good level when, when Frederick was dealing with his, his disorder, his, his ailment that cost him a season. I'd rather have him kind of be that swing interior alignment, or at least Biotish can be the understudy to Looney and ultimately take over at the pivot. But I thought this was a day two player. Um, the, the one concern I do have about him is the fact that he does spend a little too much time on the ground. But typically, Wisconsin offensive linemen are, are quality NFL players. And when you have a guy with this kind of mind at the center position, because, of course, at the pivot, you have to be a headsy player. And, but when you surround him with the likes of a Zach Martin and Lyle Collins and Tyron Smith, it's only going to make him better. Drew, what, what did you think about this selection? What do you think about Biotish overall? Yeah, it, it makes it makes too much sense. Like, you know, based on everything that the Cowboys have picked, they just they just continue. Every pick is just making sense, more and more sense. Um, when you talk about need, meeting value, I mean, meeting best. I don't I'm not gonna, I wouldn't say best player available, but with the need meeting the the, the value yeah. of the player, it, mm -hmm. it just makes sense. Um, he's quick off the snap, hands up uh, and out first. Uh, with him getting his hands on the defender first, you would think uh, you know, it was kind of give it, he would you know. Uh, he would be driving the defender back. Um, but I thought it was usually a stalemate and it would take him a second or two to kind of get his bearings and be able to start to drive the defender back. And, 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 and when that happened, he was able to seal off whomever he was uh, blocking. Um, I thought that he struggled when he was going to the second level, would kind of fall forward, have his head down, yeah. um, start to reach. Um, 
but I, I thought he had the speed and the footwork to get to the second level, just has to fix that issue where he's, he's leaning his head. And I think that was just him trying to get there, you know, give him a little bit more oomph. Um, so you, we would, you know, relate that to being a technique issue. But what he did best um, was on double teams or just finding the free rusher, which is kind of what you want your center to do is find that guy that's, that's you know, no one's paying attention to to have his head on the swivel. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I have him as a better run blocker than pass protector. Um, I do think he can move either in power or zone schemes. Uh, I think he's a smart football player. I like him going forward. Uh, he has that requisite nasty. You want that nasty from your offensive lineman. He does have that nasty. Um, the thing I have, the issues I have with him, he's a, he's six four. He has his high pad level. Uh, he's a center. So, you know, he might have issues with inside power at the next level because of uh, just being so upright. But uh, other than that, man, he's, he, he started on this Wisconsin offensive line. Wisconsin has produced a lot of great offensive linemen in the NFL. And plug him into that, that offensive line at, in Dallas, I think this is a, uh, also a good pick, man. I don't think the Cowboys missed on any of these picks so far. In the fifth round, Dallas selected Bradley and A, uh, the edge rusher out of Utah. And, and Headley, Drew and I actually had opportunity to see him in Mobile. And they kind of played him off the ball. You know, he wasn't. Um, playing a ton of edge pass rusher during the practices. But, of course, during the game, they unleashed him. What do you, what do you think is tape and the value that he represents in the fifth round? Yeah, I know a lot of our analysts had him a lot higher on their boards. I didn't have him as high on my board because, uh, you know, although he's an aware football player, he, like you said, he could play on the second level effectively. He's a high-effort guy, but the lack of athleticism shows up on tape a lot with, with Bradley and I. Uh, I know he had that very strong senior bowl. That's what, that's what really catapulted his, his draft stock to, to, to evaluators. They thought he was going to get picked earlier because he was coming off the edge. But he, he took advantage of a, of a bad tackle. And, yeah, I think he went exactly where he, his, his talent is as, as a fifth-round selection. I have him. I know it's hands are active at all times. Was used to drop back and play some zone coverage. It didn't look out of place. Has the ability to get up up the field and squeeze down on the tackle to get to the quarterback, start at the point of attack, not giving up any real movement at the, the same time, won't uh, make, the, make the play on the ball carrier, uh, needs to develop a second plan of attack, uh, turns the, the, the play ends up turning into um, patty cake, a patty cake session. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember that? Y all, y all yeah, remember that? Patty, yeah, I know the patty um, cake. Okay. Pat has an excellent spin move but doesn't use it enough, um, can be slow off the ball, um, and has short arms. Without question, there are some limitations with an eye. But uh, I, I think the, the, the fact that there, there isn't going to be a ton of expectation for him to play a ton of snaps, I think he'll be able to, to you know, be worked in as part of that rotation along the edge. You know, if, if he does get a duck out there, he can take advantage of a duck. You know, and I think he has enough of a motor and, and enough pass rushing moves in order to, to affect the passer from time to time in a situ situational pass rush uh, capacity. So um, that being said, let's let's move on to the final draft selection for the Cowboys in the 2020 NFL draft. And that's Ben DiNucci, quarterback out of James Madison, selected in the seventh round. DiNucci represents what a lot of NFL teams covet now um, with, with the advent of, of Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson and Kyler Murray and all of these guys who can get outside the pocket and, and, and stress the defense, extend the play, play off schedule. DiNucci actually... Uh, brings that skill set to the table. Unfortunately, he doesn't have, you know, the, the prototypical arm strength and, and he doesn't play with enough uh, anticipation in order to, to be consistent. So we'll see how he develops in this organization. Of course, there won't be any pressure on him, assuming, you know, the Dak Prescott is healthy. And of course, they recently brought in Andy Dalton. So the new chief in all likelihood will be a, a, a practice squad guy you know, emergency quarterback type situation, assuming he makes this team. I do want to take a couple of minutes to talk about a few of the Dallas Cowboys undrafted free agent signings. They actually had a total of 15, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there's Francis Bernard, the linebacker out of Utah. I know you were, were high on him, Headley, as well as a pair of running backs out of TCU, including Jay Anderson and Sewu Alunalau. So, so Headley, break it down for us. Do, do you think either of these three players will make this roster and why? Well, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Francis Bernard. Um, I understand why he went undrafted, uh, had some uh, off-the-field issues. Uh, he was a running back transfer also, so he's kind of new to the position. Uh, processing, he struggles, but what he does really well plays at the next level where he's a downhill guy, 
he does you don't want him thinking too much. You want him just attacking. He's an attacking downhill player. Uh, the Cowboys run that sort of defense, so I think he fits over there in Dallas. Um, I expect him to make the team. Jet Anderson and Sewu. When I watched the tape on these guys, I was I wondered why Sewu was on the field as much as he was. Um, he probably met a pass protector, probably a more you know headsy football player. But Jet Anderson has the skills. He has the tools. Uh, he's a downhill slashing running back. Uh, once he gets to the open field, he kills angles, outruns defenders. So Jet Anderson has a lot of uh, potential. I think Sewu is more the a power nose inside runner. Um, I, I prefer Jet Anderson. I'm not sure about Sewu. You know, Anderson's 40 time really hurt him. Um, I, I, I think that's ultimately what cost him a uh, draft selection. But, but he does get to play close to to his alma mater, close to home. And uh, we'll see. We'll see if he can he can break through and make this roster, considering that, of course, Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard are ahead of him. When you go back and you look at the, the Cowboys uh, draft class, I know a lot of Cowboys fans are happy. Jerry did the right thing. Um, and, and it just when, when you when you go down each pick, the, the picks kind of just fell fell into right into their um, the lap, their pocket, whatever you want to call it. Um, and um, I mean, they're going to compete. And when you when you talk about that division, the only other team that you know possibly could give them a run for their money, because uh, I think they had a they had a pretty good draft as well, is the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, but um, it's for me, it's going to come down to make sure that we sign Dak, obviously, and two is is um is can the defense put it together um because if the defense can put it together um if they can turn the football over like they did in years past um then you know this is a team that's you know is, is they're gonna they're gonna be a problem now because you know obviously last year you know it was the the michael gallup and and uh Mari cooper as long as you didn't um you didn't press manum um show uh, but now they've added a different type of element, a, a, a receiver who may get off in the, the early stages of of um his game. Um, but again, it, it's, it's a receiver that, that if he gets the football, you get it in his hands, uh, could be some problems. So um, I, I, I think this, this draft class, man, I, I, I Cowboys did a good job, man. I, I'll give him an A. All right. I'm sure, I'm sure Cowboys fans will be glad to hear that. That's going to do it for this 2020 NFL draft recap for the Dallas Cowboys. Please like, comment, and subscribe.